Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Hero survivors at Kavanaugh's Senate hearing busted for huge lie. Outgoing Arizona Senator Jeff Flake has insisted that his last-minute decision to demand that the FBI reopen its background check investigation into Trump SCOTUS nominee Brett Kavanaugh wasn't inspired by a pair of young women who accosted him in the halls of the U.S. Capitol and loudly berated him with tear-jerking stories of sexual abuse. But the timing of Flake's change of heart is certainly curious, and the liberal press has widely heralded the two young women as heroes for helping to force a delay of Kavanaugh's confirmation by at least another week. But one thing the progressive press hasn't reported is that the two young women weren't merely concerned citizens speaking truth to power. The reality is that Anna Maria Arkel and Maria Gallagher are both professional political activists employed by the Center for Popular Democracy. And guess who finances the CPD? That's right. According to a report in the New York Post, the CPD is financed primarily by George Soros Open Society Foundation. The massive non-profit that supports groups fighting on behalf of the billionaire investors' political agenda across Europe and the U.S. That dramatic confrontation in front of a senator's only elevators was a political stunt organized by a Soros-funded organization. This means that Soros has played as large a role as anybody in helping delay a confirmation vote on Kavanaugh. Make no mistake. The Center for Popular Democracy is at the heart of the effort to stop Kavanaugh. A source forwarded to me an email sent from the organization, last week, you saw protesters interrupting the Kavanaugh hearings, trying to slow it down and show the Judiciary Committee how much they slash we care. Those protests were organized by the Women's March and the Center for Popular Democracy and other groups. Arkola has another role beyond her duties as co-executive director of the Center. She is also a member of the National Committee of the New York-based Working Families Party. The WFP was founded in 1998 by the leaders of ACORN, the now disbanded and disgraced group of community organizers. In 2009, Acorn finally ran off the rails. Guerrilla videographer James O'Keefe secretly recorded employees in its offices in Brooklyn, Baltimore, Washington and San Bernardino, California. O'Keefe and a colleague posed as a prostitute and a pimp and said they were planning to import underage women from El Salvador for the sex trade. They asked for and received advice on getting a housing loan and evading federal taxes. The U.S. Senate quickly voted 83-7 to 7 to strip Acorn of more than $1.6 million in federal housing money meant to help low-income people obtain loans and prepare tax forms. Within weeks, Acorn's donors fled the group and it was forced to close its doors, with many of its affiliates reforming under new mismanagement and new names, such as the WFP. The impact that this confrontation had on Flake was readily apparent. Media reported an instant change in his demeanor, with his eyes wet and his chin tucked into his chest. Additionally, one of the women has ties to the Working Families Party, and organization financed by alumni of ACORN, the group of community organizers that shut down in 2009 after conservative journalist James O'Keefe exposed some of its organizers engaging in nefarious behavior on behalf of the organization. Furthermore, just imagine if two women cornered Diane Feinstein in an elevator and demanded that she investigate how Christine Blasey Ford's letter describing her alleged assault leaked to the press? But imagine if two women had cornered a Democratic senator in an elevator and demanded an investigation of who had leaked to the media Christine Blasey Ford's letter alleging that Kavanaugh had sexually assaulted her. Senator Lindsey Graham said Sunday that he planned to investigate the leak, there would have been sputtering outrage in media circles, and reporters would have breathlessly hunted down any ties between the women and outside groups. It's a sign of media bias that the people from the well-funded groups behind the anti-Kavanaugh protests are described merely as activists and that their political motives and origins are largely unexplored. If there is a takeaway here, it's that the U.S. media is far too lenient on these activists, often neglecting to perform even a simple background check to determine if they have any affiliations that might be cause for bias. But given the current climate, we don't expect this to change anytime soon. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.